Hi everyone, welcome back into the classroom. We're continuing some of our Christmas paintings with some really fun kind of small designs today. I'm going to do it again on this 8x10. Uh, this is the MDF uh, board that I buy. I gave it a coat of the, you know, you can make a, any kind of a light brown, but uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to darken it down. Now I'm using the six color set to keep everything easy for us. This is the Hansa yellow, the naphthol red light, thalo blue. Uh, red, violet, black, and white, okay? And if you want to share some of your stuff, come on over to our uh, social network. We're on MeWe.com. We have um, created an entire little painting environment without all the other noise of that's going on all over the Internet. We've, we have just isolated ourselves to some nice, fun groups that we're posting and sharing and having a good time over on MeWe. And don't forget to check out the Jansen Art Studio. That's where you find all of the uh, playlists that we have. We're going to be having the uh, Come Paint With Us beginning lesson starting up soon. So make sure you get over there because that there you can download everything I need, including like this color, um, this value scale. You can get it right over there on uh, the Jansen Arts, uh, Studio com. Okay, so what I'm going to do is a little bit darker one, I think, today. I'm going to take some uh, naphthol red light and let's add a little bit of black. About four parts naphthol red light, one part black gives you this nice kind of a real dark, it's hard to see some, but it's kind of a brownish color. Now I like to take that up with some uh, uh, Hansa yellow sometimes. It makes this uh, more rich kind of color. So almost an equal amount of this, like the Hansa yellow and you get these burnt siennas that I really like here. Uh, this is a little cap of extender. Sometimes I put it in there to uh, give myself a nice uh, a nice flow to the color, or so it just moves over, slides over the surface really easy. I like that. Sometimes I use water, but water dries pretty fast here, so the extender will dry a little bit slower. I'm going to take that, and then I'm going to take my paper towel, dip it in just a little bit of the extender, and just pull through. Uh, here and you can create just like wood grain, you know with this when you do this. It's really kind of fun You can create some all different kinds of looks here And if those of you that are uh, you know watching some of the videos building your own frames You know I show how to build some of your own frames over on our other channels um, you know you could use these colors here to um, you know paint your frame too so you get a nice harmony to your painting and to your uh to your uh you know your frame so okay let's go uh let's go grab one of my favorite used brushes here a larger flat eight or a ten uh flat is a real good one you could use a, a filbert on this also if we're going to do stroke flowers a filbert is a real nice one to use too but i'm trying to use some limited brushes and just do some real quick painting with you now you can see as I stretch that out, there's areas of wet and dry. It's going to dry pretty fast. It is um, very, very much a uh, becoming a winter day outside here today. It is the air is very, very dry. And winter air is usually very dry, and so that dries out your acrylics pretty quickly here. But that's okay because I don't. I'm not a blender. I don't care for it to stay wet for too long. Um, let's come in and let's just create. Let's create some softer yellow, yellow, a little bit of violet will help make a gray kind of color here and mix it up with some of the background here. Just a lighter color. I always want to go about two to three value. I don't want to go white. I want to be about two to three values here. So I'm right up in here towards my seven, seven to an eight here. And let's just start. Let's push one right out over here. And I, you know, you visualize when I start a stroke flower, I generally start them out uh, a little bit smaller here. And I'm just going to push a little bit. I, you know, this is something I never did with stroke flowers and stuff for a long time. But now that I'm really, you know, an artist that loves lost and found edges and stuff, I don't mind doing it now. I, and this will just keep give me a soft idea. As I kind of, let's do like maybe a, a three rows kind of composition here. You know, we um, we do all different kinds of compositions, but we want to keep these paintings. These are just quick little gift ideas, selling ideas for you. And, uh, 
you know, you take these to your local art fair and, and sell them and stuff. They're just nice little paintings. And, uh, you know, you could put some smaller little blossoms out here. Maybe we'll do that. But I get an idea. I, I take off the edges here with my finger, just blur it out a bit here, just like that. And then I'm going to come back, lighten this up, and we'll build the front of the flower just a bit. So we'll see where the front of the flower is. Now leave a space out here for your bowl. You can soften that up. This is just, all this is going to cover up. This just helps you start to see your flowers, where your flowers are going to be. And so this is another way I do it sometimes when I'm just sketching or uh, say I take a large tray or something and I'm going to be painting and kind of drawing my design at the same time. I put it on something like this so I can start to just generally see the flowers. I don't have to keep it like this, but just just starts it. Now, let's go in. Let's make ourselves kind of a... I love oranges to, to the violets here. So we'll put a little orangey violet. So I put a little orange in the brush, and then I just run it right into a little bit of our red violet here. And let's put the deep part... Just a nice little circle right here like this, or half circle, of the deep part of the rose right in there like that. Kind of sets that in. This bottom one can be a little softer. We can push a little more orange to the outside here. Maybe a little orange and the violet down here into the, the bowl of the flower here. I like the orange in that it, you know, creates a glow. Now you can vary this. Have some, like this one, maybe a little bit more yellow than that one here. Maybe a bit more of this one right in between the two. Maybe it's uh, orange and red and colors. I like the colors to change just a bit. And somewhere like sometimes right in between here where I have, this is what we call a formality of design, I'll just bring this right in together so that you don't know which one's going to be what and where yet. You just put in some nice cool darks. These roses are going to collide right in there and that'll be okay. Maybe a bit of of yellow right here. Now, many of you write on me that you're you're real stiff with your painting. Painting like this, learning how to paint like this, even though you're going to do some, you know, more stroke roses. What I mean by a stroke rose is the way in which we approach the petals and stuff. But when you're going to do more of a stroke rose, even like this, uh, you know, starting out more casual is really going to help you quite a bit. So what do I mean by a stroke rose? Let me take a board here and show you with a light petal. Usually when I make a petal, a uh, you know, when I make a casual petal, what I do is I, I just touch the brush and then I lift up the pressure and I whisper the petal out like that. So, And then I push and so that's basically the rose petal right there like that. When you make a stroke petal, sometimes I will do it like three times. I turn the brush slightly at an angle and I'll go one and then slightly longer, two, then slightly shorter, three. And then I'll push the edge just a little bit. So you get a little different looking petal that has some streaks in it a little different than this one, which stays very soft. This one stays a little bit more uh, harsh and stuff to it. And there's all kinds of ways. I do all different kinds of ways. I spend my day trying to figure out how to stroke flowers, you know. So let's take some of this nice value 7 to an 8 light color. Um, maybe I'm going to come, I'm going to push this one up towards the front here. So I'm going to come right here and push this rose right up to the front. So here comes one right in towards the bowl. So here's going to be the bottom of my bowl. Next petal is I'll reach out a little farther. Then I reach out a little shorter. And I stop each time at the bowl. And I'll push it right into the bowl there, just like that. Okay. I'll come back, redress the brush, pick up some more. Three petals, three strokes at least. One, one right here, and one right here. Now it's picking up some of the violet and stuff. I'm just going to let that happen. Okay, let's pick up a little more color right up here. Let's come up here. Let's go just a little bit past our circle here. And we'll go to one, stop at the bowl. Two, stop at the bowl. And three right here, stop at the bowl. Then push the petal into the bowl, just like that. Okay? And you get more, you know, <clears throat> you get petals that are a little bit more structured when you do this. Now, let's drop down, cool down. I'm going to add a little extender to this so that it stays 
uh, slippery. And I'm I'm going to go uh, still kind of do the three strokes, but very quickly and more casually here. Just an impression of them here like that. So that will stay a bit more of an impression. Let's come up, pick up some more white, maybe a touch of that yellow into it. Let's put a, a bull stroke right across here, across the front of that rose. You can pull it down. You can pull it down like that. You can stroke it down, or you can do what we call walk it down. Go one and two, and then let it, then, you know, it gives you more color if you do what we call walk it down the petal, okay? But you can see the stroke flowers stay a little more stiff here. And that's okay. And we're going to build a beautiful rose here. We'll go a little bit more to the pinky side over on this side. So the color stays a little softer. We'll just push that around to that other side there. Okay. And now we have to make the decision here. We could de de decorate with more bowl petals or decorate with more uh, stroke petals. And I think I'll do maybe a little bit of both. So I'll come down here and let's pull in another petal right down like this let it come right in there like that so we get another larger petal let's take some of this nice pink and violet and stuff and just come to the back here and just add a little bit of some softer movement back there to those uh, rose petals there now so I have here now this is where I'll maybe pick up some of this maybe a bit of the yellow into this I'm gonna go a little bit lighter I'm going to pick it up more on the edge, and since I'm using a large brush, which is really kind of large to, you know, get a petal in there, I'm going to turn it on its edge here like this, and pull this right in towards its bowl here. Maybe only one or two here I can get in at that time there. Maybe only a couple. Sometimes I, that would be enough. Sometimes I will put an extra petal of these right in here like this, and maybe a, just a real quick little idea off to that side. This is where I start looking to, you know, uh, combining the look of a stroke rose and the look of a casual rose, and I like that. Let's just close off this edge here a bit, just push that around, just give it a little bit of color and idea. Now we can um, build up the front here a little bit more a little more white. Now, that gets real small to try to get your finger in there to fix that. So just pinch wipe your brush, pick up a little bit of your shadowy color, maybe a little bit of this color in your brush, and just pull the bowl. Just pull the bowl down like that, reset it, pick up some light color, and then stroke that outside petal here again, and you're softening these petal, these two looks of these petals coming together. I'm gonna put a little bit more light right into the very front. Maybe a, a stroke or two out here. So you see you get a rose that looks very different. And it's all how you stroke it. But I'm always thinking here, one, two, three. Each time I go, I, I always think as I'm putting this on, there's not enough color there. I'm always thinking one, two, three, and to those petals as I'm putting those on. And so you get a nice different kind of shape of a rose here. And we can add even another pe the idea of another petal back here like that. So that pushes that other rose even further back. Maybe some more white, maybe a touch of our yellow or so into this. Some more light and just come right across the front of this to give a nice light, more casual look to the rose. So you see it's a building process. You look at this rose here like now and you go, man, I can't paint that. But you break it all down and you start looking at, okay, do I want to use the petal edging technique? Now, what was that? You pick up just a bit of that on the corner and I'll just draw the edge of that of this petal again right here to bring it out a little bit more. So I lean over onto the brush here and I just draw it here and bring that petal up just a little higher. And I'm directing the rose until I see, feel that I get a real pretty little rose here. Now, let's set this other one into the back. Let's take a little of that orange, some of this pinky color here. Let's just push a little bit of that right in here. This kind of pretty colors here. 
and we'll we'll do a very simple. So a lot of people say, well, why don't you paint this one first and then this one? Because I would usually make too many petals on that back one and then paint the first one in front of it and they fight each other. So I just sneak it in and I, I'll take off, I'll show you here, I take off some of the extra if I think I get too much. Now, I don't want to make this one as light as this one. So I'm going to add some of this into this and paint just a bit darker. Let's put the lighter color here onto the front of the rose, just like we did. Pull down, one, two, three. Let's take a bit of this light right out here. We'll put an outside petal. Now that's a bit light. I'm going to go down just a bit more. It's a little better. One, two, three. And I'm just going to whisper that back edge there just a bit off like that. That's a, a bit straight, you know, a bit stiff, not too great. So I'll just kind of break it up there a minute. Let's take some of this just lightly back here and give the impression of a little movement. When I paint casual roses, I paint for movement. I don't paint for, um, you know, petals. I paint for movement. I just move it around. And just the movement of the paint will look like petals, okay? And all of this, all of this takes practice, right? Takes practice. Don't get frustrated. You can do it. Just watch it real slow. Watch a few minutes of me stroking that rose. Stop it because I pause very well. Pause the video and try that stroke. Move it forward a little bit and try that stroke. And soon, now, you know, soon you'll start painting some different ones, okay? All right, let's go a little bit lighter. We're watching the front of this other rose, though. Let's put on another one. Now, as I'm colliding there with this other rose here, I have to try to sneak a shadow in or whatever. And so I'm gonna rinse the color out of my brush here like this, and I'm just gonna lift off. I'm gonna wipe that brush off here again, and I'm gonna lift off. And that puts the shadow, because there's original shadow underneath there. I'm just lifting the paint off. And if I need to, I can pick up a little more light and build use the petal edging technique and put these petals of that one right up in front of it. So there's no problem here. Let's take just a bit of that light and create a little petal right here. There like that. Let's keep it softer, a little softer, little violets and some yellows and stuff here. Let's create a nice soft one too. We usually have three, one, two, three, and I'll push that off there just a bit. Nice soft little petal. Maybe another one right here. Go just a little bit lighter. Pick it up onto the edge, because all I want to do is just sneak in some petals here. Just sneak some petals in. Don't forget to pull the bowl. Now I collided with that one there just a bit. That's not a problem. What do you do? Rinse out your brush. Take off so you get that shadow back. Pick up a little bit of edge of color here, and let's push that petal right back up on top so you see that nice petal coming right back there on top. I even have room here to kind of sneak in another look of another petal there. And let's take some of this soft color right out here, and let's just push in the idea here of some back petals, maybe some real soft, maybe just a very small edge of a slightly lighter color back here. Give a different look to this one. I always try different looks, see? Okay, and this one up here, again, very close. Let's just barely paint this one. We'll go a little more yellow. We'll push that in. We'll go a little bit lighter. We'll come right across the top here like that um, we're, we'll sneak in some petals right in here let's take some of our light color we'll come right up next to that one one it's a little light so I'm gonna go down just a bit more here let's go down just a bit darker one two three and let this just when I get back out here I start painting faster and I start painting really casual here. I don't want to get too much. Now, again, we have a collision right there. 
of those petals. So I'm just going to rinse my brush, come back to my pinky color here, put a little light color in it, and pull this one right back up on top of that other rose right there. And so basically it do you know does when i when i'm in my rose painting classes and stuff i always tell my students establish a queen she controls the composition so she controls what you do with all the other roses so this one is really those of you that paint in my classes that's our queen right i'm going to put a little more white right there onto this queen here pull that down she's a nice pretty rose and the other ones will sit just just partial there maybe uh little bit more yellow a nice partial tone it down a bit here with these colors take it right in here towards our shadow let's just pull one right into the bowl there two three find the bowl push the bowl in maybe a, a small one right there find the bowl push it into the bowl that's not too bad maybe we'll fold over these edges here to build some more of this edge of the rose, the brown bowl of the rose, push the round bowl. See, by pushing that color, you get some nice color movements here. That's all I'm looking for is color movement, because I paint for movement. And I'm, we'll just add a few little movements there, and it makes a nice, pretty little rose. Now, we can darken it down. We could add some more shadows. You could come in here softly restating shadows a little bit of our yellow red and the red violet here restate any of your shadows pushing some of that color into your rose here if you want to get a little more contrast a little cooler contrast maybe right up here like this and pull just a bit of that in there it gives you just a touch more contrast how much you put on that's all up to you now if you don't like it don't put it on you know just uh you find out what you like, and as a selling artist, I end up painting it all because someone's going to want it. You know, some people like more contrast than others. So there's three soft little roses. Let's go yellow. We have the olive green we make from yellow with a touch of black, and then I usually will like to put a little bit of blue into that to take that over. Make this green go with what we're painting. I'm going to push the reds and these colors right into it. And that will give you a nice green that will go nice and harmonious with what we're painting. Two or three strokes here. Let's just add a few little leaves here. Now, I like to push them. Sometimes I give them a, a little bit or take off some of the extra, like I said in that other video, leaving just the memory of the paint there. We'll add a little more black, a little more blue. Make this a little darker, a little more toned with some red. Let's come back down here. And maybe, a, so I'm a big advocate for, because I didn't do this for years, of changing your greens. Change the colors of your greens. That's a pretty big habit that a lot of artists have is that uh, we tend, we'll go paint all these beautiful roses and then we make all the same leaf. And I did that for years. Not that there's anything wrong with it. You still want to buy those books and DVDs. <laughs> but I did that for years. I would just, you know, I would get that same color green and just think, wow, that's great. And you use it everywhere. But now I'm a big advocate of change that green. Change that green. You know, make the different colors of it and stuff. So you have some nice variations of it. And so we can cre create some nice lights and darks of our of our composition here. We can uh, take some of this lighter green, a little red in it to it here, and pull out a, a few little stem lines and stuff. You know, you can go stem lines can go lighter or darker. You know, they can go both ways here. So, you know, you don't have to have just uh, dark. You know, many times you'll see me put dark stems on, and that's because my boards a lot of times are light. And I paint a lot. I paint a lot of light boards because that's usually what sells very well for me is the light boards. But the roses look very nice on darks. Now let's just take a little chisel like we've done on some of the others, and push a, a bit of the light down the vein line. That gives an extra little bit of motion there for it. And it's kind of nice. I have the feeling that I want to get a darker, 
blue green kind of color here a little black some blue here this will be a higher contrast darker maybe a little cooler red violet into it and uh, use that for some deeper shadows and stuff see the contrast that that creates here and uh, so I can use that back out over here into some contrast areas and it's kind of nice sometimes to put a, a real wispy uh, kind of a casual green with a stroke flower is 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 kind of nice here we'll pull some of that down let's get a little bit of that yellow and uh, red with that as well just mixes that up and create some different colors see and uh, that's our job right it's our job we could use a bit of that here and there as little marks of color and uh, yeah just push that around makes a pretty little painting of some roses now you could add blossoms in there um, you know if you want but you don't want to fill it up too much you want to leave negative space negative space is space around your design that doesn't have anything so sometimes painting three roses on the next one maybe we'll paint just one rose and some blossoms or something like that and fill it in and show you those three uh, roses here painted very formally so the design stays a little tight all kinds of ways you can paint them informal where you bring two roses or this would be informal these two are informal this two are formal they touch each other and these two are informal they don't touch each other and whether or not you touch your roses and spread them out they get all kinds of different looks to them okay and so you got you know if you got a lot of presence of it we got a lot of different kinds of design style strokes and roses we can do it can be a lot of fun all right all right, so there you go. Don't forget to hit like on that uh, on that video. That helps our videos quite a bit. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Go check out our uh, our social network on MeWe and the Jansen Art Studio. Okay, thanks a lot for joining me. We'll do another one. Got a lot of these coming. We'll do some more. I'll see you on those.